Hey everybody and welcome to my second of three videos uh, dealing with trigonometry with right triangles uh, for things that you would typically see in a high school geometry course. The first video introduced us to how we find the ratio of the, of the uh, sine cosine or tangent ratios, whichever one we're going to use based off of where the angle is located uh, in the triangle. And then it, we practiced how we would identify which ratio to use, sine, cosine, or tangent, uh, and then how to do some basic algebra with those ratios to solve the for the length of the missing side of a right triangle. Well, this video, what we're going to do is we're going to be expanding on that, and now instead of using the sine, cosine, or tangent ratios to find a side length of a triangle, now what we're going to do is uh, use this to now find the missing or an, uh, uh, an indicated angle that we're going to be looking for. And the way that we're going to be doing that is with the inverse of sine, cosine, or tangent. So we'll still identify which of the three, th three basic ratios we use based off of what side has been given to us uh, in the triangle. And then we will use something called the inverse sine, cosine, or tangent to find the angle measurement. Now, in this case, uh, we will differ from what we did in the sides video. In the sides video, I told you to round everything to the nearest thousandths, to the nearest three decimal places. But here, when we're finding an angle measurement, we will go ahead and keep things to the nearest tenth. Okay? So I'm going to do three of the six problems that you see here for you. I'm going to do the odd numbered problems, one, three, and five. And then I'm going to ask you to try and do problems two, four, and six, just to make sure that you're understanding uh, what we're doing and are getting a good grasp of how you are going to use the inverse of sine, cosine, or tangent uh, in with trigonometry. Now, uh, again, we are going to be doing all of this stuff with a calculator. And just as I discussed in the last video, uh, we want to make sure that the mode that we're in, that we are in degrees. So here, this is my uh, nice little sex, uh, uh, scientific calculator from Texas Instruments. Uh, so to get there, I just hit the mode button and I make sure that I'm in degrees. If you are using a TI Inspire, which probably this is what you're using. Uh, again, if you want to, to make sure that you're in degrees here, uh, from your home screen, you go to settings, uh, document settings, and then you arrow down to where it says radians, and you get the drop down menu, and then you select, select degree, and then you say OK, and now you should be in degree mode. Uh, remember, if you do this stuff in radians, you can algebraically still do everything correctly, but the calculator may give you numbers that don't really seem to make sense. Uh, and I'll do an example like that just to make sure that you're okay with you know, what you should kind of expect to see with degrees and radians. So here, this is what we're changing now. They've given us two sides of the right triangle. Now we could find the third side of the triangle using the Pythagorean theorem, but that's not what we're asked to find now. We're asked to find the measurement of the angle. So in this case, from this angle here, this is the side that would be opposite of the angle. This is the side that would be adjacent to the angle. And the hypotenuse is always going to be across from the right angle. So the 24 is the hypotenuse. Well, out of the three sides that we have, the two that we are going to use will be the opposite side and the hypotenuse because that are, those are the two side lengths that were given to us. Now, could we use the Pythagorean theorem to find the adjacent side and use it? Sure we could, but what if I made a mistake? Uh, try not to use calculated values for future you know, operations if you can avoid it. So we're going to just stick with the opposite side and the hypotenuse. And opposite and hypotenuse, if you recall, uh, is going to be the ratio for sine. So opposite and hypotenuse, so I'm going to say uh, sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. 
Now at this point here, we can start plugging in our values similar to what we did in the last lesson. And I would say sine of x in this case is equal to the opposite side, uh, 15 over 24. Now, if we could simplify this, we you know might want to simplify this. It, it may make things easier. Uh, but 15 over 24, if I'm doing the stuff in my head correctly, that should simplify to be 5 eighths. Uh, so, you know, if you want to simplify the ratio, you can simplify it to 5 eighths, but it's really not going to make a big deal, uh, a real difference, because we're just doing this stuff on our calculator anyway, and the calculator will simplify it for us. Now, here, this is where uh, things are going to get a little bit different. Now, algebraically, what we're doing is we're still doing an opposite operation. What I'm going to do is we're going to wind up taking the inverse sign of both sides. So when I take the inverse sign here, let's see, let me just write it here. Take, take uh, the inverse sign of both sides. And so when I do that, I'm going to say sine inverse of sine of x is equal to, and running out of space here, sine inverse of 15 over 24. Didn't realize I was going to be so cramped on space there. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see a little better. Well, here, sine inverse and sine, they undo each other and they leave me with just x. And I'm taking the inverse sine of the other side as well and I wind up with sine inverse of 15 over 24 or the 5 eighths if you simplified it. And that's what I'm going to wind up typing into my calculator to find the angle measurement. So here on the calculator, and let me let me zoom back out here so we can you know, see the buttons a little bit. On my calculator, uh, the way that I'm doing it, if you notice, si let, me, let me zoom in on the buttons. On my calculator, inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent are on the same buttons here. And on the Inspire, because uh, this is probably the calculator that you guys are using, So here, let's see, we want to do, uh, let's see, I don't know what I was doing here. Uh, let's add a calculator. We're just going to, I guess, go to a new document. And that's kind of blurry or bright. Let's see if we can start seeing things when we type it in there. Well, the trig button here is right under the control button. So I can say trig, and when I do, that's where I can see... Uh, sine inverse, cosine inverse, tangent inverse. Now these other ones that you're seeing here, these are the other three basic trig ratios of cosecant, secant, and, tang and cotangent. Those are the reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent respectively. And we won't really get into those in high school trigonometry, or I'm sorry, in uh, trigonometry that we look at in geometry in high school, but in pre-cal and calculus, uh, you'll see those uh, used. So know where to access your inverse trig stuff. Okay, so here on my calculator, I'm just going to hit the sign button twice for inverse. And so now you have that that little negative one value. Ooh, and you can't see the, the, you see that negative one in the exponents position. That shows you that you're doing the inverse sign, and this is what we want to do anytime we're finding an angle measurement. So here I'm going to say inverse sine of 15 over 24. 24, there we go. And again, if I close the parentheses here or just hit enter, the calculator will close the parentheses for me. And I'm going to get an angle measurement of 38.7 degrees. So here x is approximately equal to 38.7 degrees. Now the stuff that I'm doing here in pink, where I'm actually taking the inverse sine of both sides, I'm really not going to do this pretty much, because 
uh, it's pretty much understood what we're doing as far as taking the inverse sine of both sides. So let me kind of demonstrate what I'm going to do, uh, what I mean by that, by looking at example three now. Okay. So moving on to example three, and my eight didn't come out very nicely here, 38.7. So let's take a look at uh, example three, okay? So based off of where my angle is located, this is the side opposite of it. This is the adjacent side. And of course, this is the hypotenuse because it is opposite of the right angle. And of the three sides of the triangle that are uh, there, we are given the opposite side and the adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent are the clue to let you know that we're going to use tangent. So here I'm going to say tangent of my angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. And now I'm going to start substituting. So I'm going to say the in, uh, tangent of x is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now this is where I take the inverse tangent of both sides. Now I'm not going to, again, actually say inverse tan, inverse tan, or tan of x like I did here. I'm simply going to say that x will be equal to the inverse tangent of the, op and I should have put my numbers here, not opposite over adjacent, 20 over 37. So 20 over 37. And you just type it into your calculator. So go to your handy dandy little calculator here. And uh, on my calculator, I'm going to just hit the tangent button twice so I can get uh, tangent inverse. And you can kind of see it on the display here, tangent inverse. And then you just put the ratio of 20 to 37. So 20 to 37, or you could hit the divide button, uh, whatever you want to do. And in this case, I'm going to get a measurement of 28.4 degrees. So x is approximately equal to 28.4 degrees. So the last example that I'm going to work out for you, and then I'm going to ask you guys to try and do examples 2, 4, and 7, see how you're doing. This is going to be the side opposite of the angle. This is the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent side. Adjacent, there we go. So from the angle, we're given the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So those are the two sides that we're going to use. And it looks like this one's going to use sine again, because opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So here I'm going to say sine of theta is the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So in this case, we have sine of x to be equal to uh, 40 over 41. So x will be equal to the inverse sine of the ratio 40 to 41. And now we go to our calculator and see what we get. So here I'm going to say inverse sine 40 to 41 and hit enter. And my angle measurement is 77.3 degrees. So x is approximately equal to 77.3 degrees. So there are those three examples worked out for you. And I want you to go ahead and, you know, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pause the video and work out examples 2, 4, and 6. And then when you're done, hit play so you can check your work with mine. Okay, so how well did you do with these? Uh, example number two, we got about 43.3 uh, degrees. Example four, 38 and a half. And same with uh, angle six, about 54 and a half. So cosine, cosine, and tangent are the two, are the ratios that we use for those three examples. And uh, from here on out, uh, it's a matter of, okay, well, am I looking for a side or am I looking for an angle? Because it's still, how whether you're finding a side or an angle, you still find them the same way. Make sure are you looking to uh, get your sides correct. Uh, are you looking for uh, sine, cosine, or tangent based on what they gave you? And then find either the side or the given angle. And that's what we're moving on to here. 
Uh, we're looking at a mixture of problems now for the next several questions. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do a couple of these for you. I'll do seven and eight and then ask you guys to work on uh, the next uh, available questions just to see how you're doing. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look here on number 11, I'm sorry, number seven, we're looking for a side. So based off of the angle that we're at here, this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. And this will be the hypotenuse. So based on what three, uh, what two sides we're looking at from the uh, angle, we're looking at the opposite side and adjacent side. So that is your clue to use the tangent ratio. So I'm going to say tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite side to the adjacent side. So in this case, tangent of 39 is equal to 11 over x. Multiply both sides by x, and I will get x times the tangent of 39 to be equal to 11. Divide both sides by tangent of 39, and I will get x to be equal to 11 divided by tangent of 39. And this is where I go to my calculator and type it in. And in this case, I'm going to get 11 divided by tangent of 39. And I am getting about 13.584 units long. So 13.584. So remember, sides, I want you to give them to me in three decimal places. Angles, you can give them to me one decimal place. Moving on to example eight, and then I will let you guys work on the next several on your own. Uh, here, example eight, from this angle, this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. Well, they gave us the hypotenuse, and we're looking for the adjacent side. So adjacent and hypotenuse is your clue to say we're going to use cosine in this case. So cosine of my angle is equal to the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. Start substituting. Cosine of 46 is equal to the adjacent side, x over the hypotenuse, 28. Get rid of the 28 from the denominator by multiplying 28 to both sides, and we get 28 times the cosine of 46 to be equal to x. And again, substitute into your cal or just go to your calculator now. 28 times the cosine of 46 gives me 19.450. So 19.450 zero is about the length of that side. So go ahead and pause uh, and work out nine and 10. And when you're done, hit play and uh, see how your work looks compared to mine. And then we'll move on to the next uh, set of examples. All right, here you go for the next two, nine and 10. Uh, I'm getting about 9.789 for the missing side on 9 and 12.609 for the missing side on 10. And uh, moving on from here, it's just going to be a little bit more of the same. It's just kind of a mixed practice situation. So if you would, go ahead and try working out these next five problems on your own just to make sure that you're understanding them okay. So looking here, we're going to be looking for angle measurements. So we're going to be using inverse sine, cosine, or tangent. And on 15, this is going to be the first example. Actually, go ahead and stop at 14, and I'll work out 15 for you, because this will be the first example that we'll see uh, where we have to use uh, an answer for a future calculation to make sure so make sure that we can save our numbers in our calculator. So go ahead and work out 11 through 14, and when you're done, go ahead and hit play so we can check out number 15 together and uh, see how things go from there, okay? And here we are with the next four examples worked out, finding the measurement measurement of the indicated angle. 
so we get 50 and a half, 17.8, 30.6, and 31.8 degrees. Uh, make sure you are identifying your ratios correctly based off of the sides that are given to you. Uh, so that way you can do the correct inverse uh, sine, cosine, or tangent correctly. Now the reason why I asked you to stop at uh, 14 is because 15 and 16, this is where we're going to start needing to use uh, calculated answers for something else, to find something else in the problem. And, and this is where we need to make sure that we save our numbers correctly in our calculator uh, in order to do so. So in this case, it's asking us to find this bit here, find DE. So I'm going to go ahead and call that X, okay? Now, if you notice, they're, they are giving me an angle here, but they're not giving me any side lengths with which to work with. So that means, based off what this they're giving me here, uh, we're going to first, let me go ahead and, I guess, go to a different color for this first bit here. Uh, we need to be able to find what is the length of this side in order to be able to get this side here because let's label this. This would be the side opposite of the 19 degree angle and this would be the side adjacent to the 19 degree angle. So opposite, opposite and adjacent tells me that we're going to use tangent with uh, the 19 but I have to be able to get this side first. Now, they're not giving me enough information on the triangle DEF to find it, but they are giving me enough, enough information on triangle CDF in order to be able to find this leg of the right triangle. So from this angle, this is the side opposite of the angle, and this is the side adjacent to it. So that opposite and adjacent relationship tells me that uh, I'm going to use tangent as well uh, to find this side here. So uh, we need to find this side. So we'll call that side Y. Okay. Uh, so FD, I'm going to call that side Y. So here I'm going to say uh, the cosine of the angle. Nope, not cosine. Tangent, opposite and adjacent. The tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So in this case we're going to say tangent of 61 is equal to y over 24. Multiplying both sides by 24 will give me 24 times the tangent of 61 and that will be equal to y. So now just type that into your calculator and we are going to get uh, 24 times the tangent of 61. And that gives me about 43.297. So 43.297 is approximately y. Now here's the thing, is that we need to take that number and we need to be able to save it on our calculator. So depending on the calculator that you have, like if you're using the Inspire, you uh, should just say, uh, what, what do we have here? On the Inspire, the way that you would store it is with this value, with, with this button here where it says variables. I would hit control variable to store the number somewhere. And I would just literally pick one of these A, B, C, Ds, whichever. I always, I always start at A first uh, on, on this calculator. But I'm not using the Inspire, so I'm going to store it on, on uh, this calculator here. So I'm going to store it, and I'm going to store it in X. Okay. Actually, I should probably store it in Y since that's what I store it in Y. There we go. Uh, so now, oh, no, I cleared the calculator. On my calculator here, uh, this button is where I'm storing all my variables. So if I just say, what is Y, it'll tell me the value of it here. Okay, so now we saved that number in our calculator. So now let's try and use it uh, to find uh, X, okay, segment DE. So here we are looking at the opposite side and the adjacent side. Uh, so again, I'm going to say tangent. So tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite side to the adjacent side. And in this case, we'll say tangent of 19 is equal to the opposite side, which in this case is x that I'm looking for, over.
over the y value of 43.297 43.297 now I'm writing that on my calc I'm writing that on my paper but that is not the number I'm going to do my calculation with I'm going to have that saved a number on my calculator uh, so in this case we're going to say 43.297 times the tangent of 19 is equal to x and so now I'll go to my calculator and we can like I already have that number there so I can just kind of take that number and say times uh, the tangent of what was it 19 and so I get about 14.908 uh, if you don't use the saved number you're not going to get this number uh, the correct rounded number here and on an AP exam not having the correct rounded number will cost you points so make sure that if you have to use a saved number or something that you use something that you found for a future calculation make sure you save it in your calculator uh, don't round it so 14.908 is approximately equal to that side x de. There we go. So the last three are examples that you should be able to work out on your own. Example 16 is going to be kind of what we did in 15, where you have to get a save uh, a number and then uh, use that for a future calculation. And uh, 17 and 18 are again going to be a word problem where, where it will ask you to either find a a uh, side length or an angle measurement. So go ahead and find the last three uh, problems here, and when you're done, hit play so you can check your work with mine. Okay, guys, and here we go. There's the last three. Uh, so in example 16, I don't know why I called this A when I had a, a ready angle here of W, but I, I, for some reason I called it A. And uh, so I need uh, something. I need, I need some side of the triangle here. And since this side of the triangle is shared with this triangle, uh, that makes me want to find this leg here, so uh, that would be the opposite side to the adjacent side. So I'm going to have to use tangent uh, to get the measurement of the angle here. Uh, but first, I have to be able to figure out what this side here is. So since this angle was side or angle y, I called this side y. Uh, and this is the side opposite of the angle that's in there, and this is the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse, say I'm going to use sine. Uh, so in this case, I get y, this hypotenuse, to be about 35.493, and, and this is the number that I save in my calculator. And then I go into tangent, so I say tangent of the side over that side to find the missing angle. I say inverse tangent of the 34.493, or 35.493, over 22, and I get about 58.2 degrees. If you didn't get 58.2, it's probably because you rounded somewhere here, and this is what would be known as a rounding error. Next, we have a, a ladder leaning up against a wall. It makes an angle of 75 degrees with the ground. The base of the ladder is six feet away. How long is the ladder? Uh, so here, this is the adjacent side. This is the hypotenuse that tells me I'm going to use cosine. So I get about a length of the ladder uh, of about 23.182 feet. And finally, Jaden is flying a kite and lets out 275 feet of string. Uh, the kite is 150 feet above the ground. And what is the angle that the string makes with the ground? So this is the angle that we're looking for. Opposite over hypotenuse, say I'm going to use sine. So inverse sine of 150 over 275 gives me an angle of about 33.1 degrees. And that's going to conclude the second lesson on uh, right triangle trigonometry, where we're using uh, the inverse sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, along with two sides of the triangle to find a missing angle. Uh, but if you have any questions, please get in touch with me, guys. And uh, until then, be good, take care, and we'll see you soon.